The number 16 for the Western Bulldogs women's AFL side and, of course, star half forward for the Darabin Falcons in Katie Brennan. Katie, first of all, uh, thanks for joining us and congratulations on being retained on the Bulldogs list. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's um, it's a pretty amazing um, honour and I really can't wait to get out there and, um, I guess, meet my new teammates and play with uh, some of the, the girls that have been kept from the Bulldogs and um, just, I guess... Um, you know, experience the the amazing opportunity again. So, very exciting. And when did you first hear of the news that you've been retained on the list? Um, we got a call from um, Craig Startsvich, which is our uh, the new Bulldogs coach. So, we had a personal call and um, yeah, just chatted to him for for a while, and um, that's where we heard the news. And then we actually had to keep it quiet for um, maybe two weeks or so before the um, the AFL. Um, let out their media release and then, you know, we could start telling people. So, yeah, it's um, pretty exciting. And you mentioned the name Craig Starsevich. Of course, the big news there for the Bulldogs is they've gone with Craig as their coach for this year. There'll be two games uh, of the AFL exhibition matches in 2015. Uh, in your conversation with Craig, did he uh, outline his expectations for this year? Um, we kind of just, you know, touched base and had a chat about the other retained players and that kind of stuff. I think we'll get uh, a little bit deeper into it when we... Uh, all closer to the games, but um, yeah, it's pretty exciting to have a coach um, of Craig's calibre. He's um, obviously as a Queenslander, I'm pretty excited to be coached under him as well. And um, yeah, it's just going to be. I think it's going to be just the next step for the Bulldogs, and hopefully, it'll um, you know help develop some of the girls and maybe get us over the line. So very exciting. And uh, it must be different, obviously, to uh, know who the coach is going to be this year because you had a bit of an interrupted uh, season last year where originally Peter Searle was going to coach again for 2014. But, of course, uh, for, for her good luck, she got picked up by the Saints and had to give up that role. Uh, how difficult was that to transition from having Peter Searle as coach to having co-coaches for the 2014 game? Look, it wasn't too bad. Um, all yeah, Peter did really well, and she's um, and it's an amazing honour to be picked up by um, the Saints, and we're all super proud of her. But to have um, Webbo and Mick there, it was pretty good. It worked quite well. Um, it was tough at times, just getting you know um, having the two coaches, but I think they worked really well together, and we got a little bit of a you know a different view. We had a Victorian coach and a WA coach, so we kind of had you know um, two different different areas that we could work on and that kind of stuff and I think they worked really well together so yeah uh, now, of course, you've uh, been in the system uh, under the Western Bulldogs, training there at Witten Oval. How much did you pick up from your time uh, training there to be able to move into your business, which is Kay Brennan Fitness? And I believe you've had uh, started an AFL uh, pre-season program. Yeah, so um, training at Witten, obviously there's amazing facilities there. Um, we got to have a look around the gym and um, train in there, yeah, the undercover area and that kind of stuff when we were in the program. So just to see um, to see that elite environment was very exciting and obviously um, to train out on the ground. Um, we picked up a lot of stuff and we had, we're under um, Tennille Hay, our strength and conditioning coach, who is a massive role model for me. Um, and I have so much respect for her. So I've learned a lot from her. And then, um, yeah, just decided to, to try and make something out of it. So Lauren Arnell and I um, joined together. And um, obviously, I'm more the strength and conditioning side of it. And she's uh, a very good kicking analysis coach um, and um, goes through all the, the game sense and, and all that kind of stuff. So I think um, we work quite well together. And we just pulled this little program together. And we were initially aiming to... I guess try and um, develop some of the girls that have played footy for a longer time, but we got a, a little bit of a different audience. We got some some new faces, some younger girls who um, were in some Calder Cannons programs and that kind of stuff. So um, a little bit of a different mix with the girls, but it worked so well. And just to see um, how much they progressed and um, you know how much of an impact we made on those girls with the six sessions we did, or sorry, the four sessions that we did, um, it was just amazing and. Um, yeah, it was just really rewarding as well. So we're definitely hoping to do another pre-season program and then eventually, hopefully, take it into state one day. So I think that's probably one of our dreams to do. So very exciting. Now, now in your program, as you mentioned, you had a, a number of girls from the call to Cannons. Have you been able to d have a look at the difference between the footballers of, let's say, the current generation of those in their mid-20s compared to those coming through? Because I guess for the girls of the call to Cannon, they're the first generation that have come through the youth girls program and had that pathway. 
Yeah, definitely. So, again, we had um, maybe about four or five younger girls and um, the rest were, you know, those older girls maybe in their first or second or third year of footy. So to see the difference between the two, um, I think... I guess the probably the age group from you know 12 to, to 15, it, it's really important to start developing the girls' skills. And that's where Loz came in and um, just, yeah, like uh, changing their kicking style and that kind of stuff, just getting in early and, and creating really positive motor patterns and, that, and um, yeah, just teaching them the basics. And hopefully they'll grow from there. But those girls are just amazing. So the, the talent and, you know, the calibre of player that's coming through is just, it's very exciting to watch. So I think, you know, us older girls have to keep on our toes and keep training hard. Otherwise, we're going to be taken over in the future, I think. And what about for your own personal development? Of course, you were playing your, your, your junior girls footy up in Queensland before you moved down to Victoria. Uh, what have you been able to pick up in your own personal development by moving into state? It's been a massive move for me um, and one that I'm so glad that I did. Um, Queensland football was great and um, it gave me, you know, it took me to the level that I was at. Um, at the stage but I I think I just wanted a little bit extra and just some personal development as well as you know football development so um, taking like all credit to Queensland I had a great um, or a great upbringing there and um, my first you know my first 10 years of footy were awesome there Um, but to move into state it's just been incredible and I guess um, my first year I was coach um, under Pete Searle and um, I learned a lot from her and um, to go to Darabin as well, I've just I've learnt so much from Darabin. It's just I feel like it's developed my football a lot, um, and also I've just developed as a person. So I think on the whole, um, the move has been very positive for me, and I'm absolutely loving it in Victoria. And I think I'll um, I'll be staying for a while. So. And of course, uh, with that, you've been able to set up your business as well, which I believe is not too far away from uh, Darabin's headquarters itself. No, it's not. It's just down the road, actually, which is, um, yeah, it's pretty handy. So, yeah, it's um, it's kind of um, trying to be, you know, a part-time athlete and then trying to just make a lifestyle around that as well. So with um, personal training and strength and conditioning work, it's, it's very flexible. But it's more about just, I guess, making an impact. And um, I really want to... I guess make my mark on on a, on footy on women's footy and um, to be coaching some of the younger girls and and um, putting them through some of my elite programs and just teaching them um, what it takes to become elite and um, you know things like nutrition and recovery and those sort of things things that they don't often get from their club or from you know, their coaches um, so to teach them that it's just it's really re- rewarding and I guess to see the growth of those younger girls is amazing as well so um, yeah the business is flying at the moment which is pretty exciting. I'm just about to go on holidays um, before the footy the footy season starts. So I'm off to Bali tonight, actually. So um, it'll be nice to get away for a little bit and then just come back nice and refreshed and, yeah, keep keep rolling. So uh, As much as you have your own business, have you put out the feelers or begun to put out the feelers to state or AFL clubs to move into that area as a, a full-time employee, whether it be in nutrition or in, in strength and conditioning? Um, at this stage, I'm very happy just, um, with my, I love being my own boss. So when I first moved, I worked for a gym, and that was great. Um, learning from um, the guy that I was working with, but I'm really happy just um, doing my own thing at the moment. I think I've just applied for uni um, and to go back and to finish my exercise science degree, which I did about three quarters of when I was in Queensland. So I've got about a year to go of that, um, and. So I'll have my, you know, exercise science degree behind me. So eventually I may want to move into um, elite sport, which is probably a passion of mine. But at this stage, I'm really quite happy working both with the public and, um, you know, with some elite athletes. So I think I'll just keep building the business at the moment and try and just build my brand, I think. So, yeah. Uh, just looking at your goal kicking for a moment, uh, in men's football we normally mark down the inside 50s. My co-commentator Daniel Hill in women's football likes to mark down the inside 30s yep. as uh, most female footballers are more comfortable having a shot from about 30, 35 metres out from goal. But yourself, we've noticed on several occasions, you're more comfortable having a shot from 45 or 50 metres out from goal. Now, has that been a natural talent for you to be able to kick that far or is that something you've had to work on? I guess um, I think the work came in the younger years. I used to run around with a football for, you know, hours on end and I'd be the first at training and, you know, the last going home from training and I just used to work on my goal kicking and 
I think the main thing is just getting a routine down pat and just backing yourself behind the goal. I've always had a bit of a, a tip to, you know, whoever I coach or, you know, any of the athletes in my team, just to pick a spot behind the goals and, and just kind of don't think about anything else but the goal, uh, but the, that spot behind the goals. Um, and then also just going through your routine and making sure that's the same every single time. And um, I guess, yeah, I feel comfortable kicking from a little bit further out. I feel a bit pressured when, you know, you're, you're five or ten metres out kicking for goal. But, um, yeah, I'd like to sometimes go for the longer kicks. But, again, I guess at Darabin, um, another thing that I've um, learnt is that we really like to share the ball around. So it doesn't really matter how, how the ball gets through the goal. It's just, um, yeah, it's kind of... It's whoever gets it there, it's kind of a team effort. So, um, yeah, it's been really good to learn from them. But, yeah, definitely hoping to, um, you know, be a bit more comfortable around goal again this year. And I've definitely been practising over over the pre-season, putting some hours in. So, yeah. Just having a look at uh, Darabin for 2015, I've had a look at the transfers page. And there's a bit of activity around St Kilda and VU St Albans, but very little for Darabin. And I guess uh, it's a one thing to your credit is you're able to promote within. The youth girls, again, being very successful. The under-18 side, five premierships in a row. Is there any of those under-18 girls coming through this year? And, and out of the lot, which looks most impressive to you? We have had a few um, that have jumped up. We had... Um a couple of young girls that actually played in the finals and the grand final last year that were just amazing for us. Um, that's the thing. We, as um, a club, we really try and just develop the girls that we have. Um, you know, if there's new talent that walks through the door, then we'll definitely take it. But it's more about just nurturing that talent that, ha- that we have and those younger girls and, and kind of trying to grow them as footballers and as people. So we definitely have some cracking young players. Um, Probably Jenna Lawson Tavern. She's one of our um, one of our young guns coming through, and we've got Jess Delpos and Shan in about their I think maybe second, third, or fourth year. So there's um, um and sorry and Beck Privatelli. So there is a few a few young young faces out there, um, and hopefully they're gonna they've had a massive preseason. So hopefully we'll step up again and. Um, yeah, show some form on the field. Without giving away too much of Richard Delpos's plans for 2015, how does he keep the girls focused on improving? For, for other sides, it's easier. They get to look at Darabin and they say, that's the target, that's the goal, that's who we've got to reach if we want to win the flag. How does he keep your, your girls focused to make sure that you keep up the high standard that you've set so far, and don't, which sometimes happens with some sides when they've been at the top for a while, when they try and take shortcuts? Yeah, Richo is amazing like that. He just continually challenges us. So individually, he'll challenge us. And as a team, he'll challenge us. So we have um, obviously an amazing strength and conditioning coach in Tenille Hay, who is putting us through some pretty grueling um, some pretty grueling strength and conditioning sessions. So that kind of develops our mental toughness and keeps us striving to be better. But Richo just... Um, Probably one of his his goals this year is to make sure we don't get too comfortable. Um, it'll be you know with our fitness stuff and then um, with the drills that he puts us through and even on game day, um, it's kind of it's being we've got a little quote that we um, that I'll share and it's just being comfortable with being uncomfortable. So um, yeah, just continually pushing ourselves and kind of your body can do more than your mind think it, thinks it can. So that's kind of the the, um, the focus that we have at Darabin and just continually um, striving to improve ourselves as individuals and then obviously on a team level as well. And just before we let you go, have you set for yourself a personal goal for 2015? Um, yeah, well, I guess one of my goals was to be retained uh, by the Western Bulldogs, um, which, um, yeah, I've ticked off at the start of the season, which is exciting. But I guess to, to just keep improving as a footballer um, and to help develop those younger girls coming through as well and some of my teammates um i think probably again on the goals list is to hopefully win another premiership with with darabin um and then maybe get a couple of wins on the board with the western bulldogs as well and um i'd love to be um in the the leadership team for darabin again this year so yeah there's a few personal goals there and i guess um some smaller goals of just breaking my my game down a little bit and working on, you know, defensive pressure and um, my goal kicking and um, explosive power and that kind of stuff. So just um, yeah, there's some small goals there and there's some some bigger goals on a on a team level as well. So so I'm um, very exciting and I 
this uh, seven weeks or eight weeks it is before the, the season, it's kind of dragging out a little bit. I just want to get into it and start playing, so can't wait.